Hi everybody, Michelangelo Badio here. Um, today is a subject uh, that I'd like to cover, uh, sweet picking. And I've covered this before, but I don't think you can cover these things enough. I mean, there's a finite amount of techniques. Obviously, there's more being invented, but there, it's not like there's constantly being new guitar techniques invented. It all kind of follows, you know, and and uh, is under specific categories, you know, whether it's hammers and pulls or alternate picking or sweep picking or, um, you know, hybrid picking. And, you know, even, even all the tapping that people do on acoustic guitar, uh, it's been done for a while, but, you know, guitarists nowadays know how to do even more incredible things, but it all kind of follows. You can look at it and really put it into a technique. Uh, I want to say uh, so hello to some people before uh, I start getting into all this. I want to say shout outs to Tanya, uh, let's see, to Denny, to Brett, uh, to Nick, Roxana, uh, Jenny, my buddy Rob, Alexis. So there's a lot of people out here. Hey, JD, how are you? And uh, Roxana's there. Uh, Dan is here. I saw somebody named Marson on there, which is cool. Uh, and I'm playing the Sawtooth. This is the M24 in Satin Black. And uh, this guitar, it's one that I signed the 100 pieces when I was in L.A. a couple times ago. And uh, so hello, everybody. It's great to see everybody online. And uh, anyway, getting back to this, um, there is a sale going on. If you still, you can still use this coupon code. It's changed. It's mab 20. And so you get 20% off any anything you want to buy. If you go to the app, the Go DPS Music app, uh, it's 20% off regardless. But uh, if you buy something, for example, say Go DPS or uh, you look at Sawtooth or Chromacast or whatever, and you put in MAB20, you get 20% off. Now... <laughs> I did when I first started doing sweeps. See, when I first started playing uh, these arpeggios, I called them rakes because they reminded me of raking leaves, Joey. I was the one raking the leaves. It was Joey and Robert. They were the ones doing all the work. And I, and I remember Joey going, Angelo, we don't like this. We want to shred. And so, but I used the word rake because it reminded me of raking your hands across the strings. Like... And so, uh, let's see. Somebody wrote, if I could jam a thing. I'm reading comments here. Why? Because I can see good. Uh, yeah, I mean, jamming with thing uh would be great. I don't think right on one of the live streams, but we can see, maybe. Um, so... Uh, but yeah, somebody wrote 20% on talent, but th there is a 20% uh, off. M-A-B-20 is the coupon code. Or if you order something from our app, it is uh, an automatic 20% off. So uh, it's a great deal on these guitars. Um, this is one of the first signature models that I did with Sawtooth, the satin black and the satin white. Um, this has a Wilkinson trim on it too. And I mean, and these guitars are so well-priced. Uh, it's just a lot of value uh, for the money. You get a great guitar for a really, really excellent price. Now getting back to sweep picking. It is one of the techniques that I found that people have a lot of problems on. This and alternate picking. Because, you know, when you get to tapping and doing things like... A lot of people can tap. And, and I'm, not just, I'm not saying this is not a viable technique. I love tapping. But it's easier for people to use those two hands to do that basic kind of thing where it's harder to do alternate picking and it's harder to do a sweep technique because one of the things that it involves is your fretboard hand is moving pretty rapidly, but your picking hand is moving slower and you've got to... So it's like... And so it's really, a, it's really kind of difficult because... You know, you've got, for example, watch, and I'm going to use this A minor shape. But 
But do you hear how every note sings out? <laughs> So when you do sweeps, and like I said, I called them rakes because it reminded me of raking leaves. And then, and this was when I lived in Chicago, and the first set of rakes that I did was this, because what is, what are you trying to accomplish with a sweep? You're trying to accomplish an arpeggio. And usually you use sweep techniques to play arpeggios. What is an arpeggio? A broken chord. Uh, one of the best examples of early sweep technique in rock is this. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll get flagged for copyrights if I keep playing the song. And so, but anyway, uh, it is that song. And so when you see that just going. See, an arpeggio is a broken chord. In other words, here's a chord. Now a triad means three, so it's only three notes. Or even this. Power chord. But a chord is four notes or more. The technical definition of a chord. So what you want to do when you play an arpeggio is it is a broken chord. I have just arpeggiated a chord. So it's simple. So you have chords, you have arpeggios. And so what I did when I first started playing arpeggios is this. And I created a solo, and I, I, I remember being on stage with the band Holland going. I played something like this, and then I thought, I'm too metal for that! I can't walk up on stage and go, oh, yes. yes, I feel it. So what I did was, I started saying to myself, well, how can I make that sound metal? And so I said, okay, you've got an arpeggio here, A minor. So I can take that basic shape in D, that's this, going, using that high note. So what I did was, I saw an opportunity to make it sound more metal. So I came up with this one. I'm not saying I invented this. I'm not saying that. It's just, when I lived in Chicago, uh, I didn't have the other people around me were, where we were talking about arpeggios like when I moved to California because right after I, I came up with all this stuff I moved to LA and then I realized other people were doing these sweeps where I called them rakes they were calling them sweeps and the, and the words and the phrase sweep technique sweep picking those phrases caught on where you don't call it rake technique. Uh, you know, it's not like a normal name for, you know, the the name that, that the general population of guitar players have given it is sweeps. So I realized when, instead of playing this... technique but I said I need to make it sound metal <laughs> and so what I did was I started doing that same kind of sweep technique but with different shapes <laughs> now on my speed kills program and all my metal method, most of them, I go over this really, really in depth. And I'm going to read something and then, uh, but because uh, I've already talked about the 20% off on the guitar, I just want to read something Doug Mark sent me today uh, about an hour before we went on. So there's a big sale going on uh, with Speed Kills too. 
It's called Beyond Speak Hills. And there's so much text. I was like, I ain't going to talk about this. I just want to read what he said. So he wrote me, Beyond Speed Kills is on sale for this weekend, through the weekend, for a 25% discount. The regular price, $64.95, is now $48.71. And here's what this program includes for under 50 bucks. Five downloads with streaming or five DVDs. So in other words, the downloads are the DVDs in download form or five DVDs. I mean, some people like to still use DVDs and, and other people, you know, the majority is downloads, but I have nothing against DVDs. And here's what Doug wrote. These are MAB's most popular programs aside from the Speed Kills program. This is called Beyond Speed Kills. And uh, it shows how I play the song Hands Without Shadows, the finish line, and how I play the song No Boundaries. Uh, it also includes um, uh, more things like the 24 jazz progressions. But um, where you get uh, my programs is you can go, it's Metal Method. So you can go to metalmethod.com or if you want to go directly to my page, learn hyphen to hyphen shred learn to shred.com and just put the little hyphen between the words learn to shred.com learn hyphen to hyphen shred but uh my speed kills programs work i mean they work great and you know one of the things that that and i and i practice what i preach i use what i say i use i use what i teach you and the proof is in all the videos that I post, you know, you, you see photos of me now, like Adam and I were talking about that. I don't post, you know, if I post an older picture, I say it's an older picture, but you know what I look like now and you know what I play like now. And you can compare that to the past. I'm still super fast. I'm still really accurate. And the reason is, is because the techniques that I taught in Speed Kills are, are I, I took that, and again, from my training in school, classical piano, um, how did people teach 100 years ago? So I took these methodologies and just turned it into electric guitar. And I'm still so passionate about guitar. I love guitars. I've got 207 now. I'm waiting for 208 guitars. And after 208, it's not enough! Then I want 416. In fact, I, right now, it's getting to the point in my house where I'm running out of room for them. And so now I can pass, you know, I can, uh, but, you know, to display, I'm like the living room where you sit. There's a, my nephew. He's great. He's super smart. And uh, he goes, Uncle Mike. He came over. He's like, Uncle Mike, um, do you know how many guitars you have in your living room and downstairs? I go, his name is Alex. I go, no, Alex, I don't. He goes, well, let me count them for you. And see, I was going to do that. To, um, you know, it's already on the insurance and all that. So there's, it's not really, but I wanted to update uh, my list because I, I put things that are in storage out there. He took him about five minutes. I was going to take photos of everything and cross and blow them up and cross them out. He's like going, 147, Uncle Mike. So when you see these pictures, uh, there's 147. I've got a whole lot more that aren't even on display. They're duplicates and triplicates of guitars I already had. But what does this have to do with sweet picking? Nothing! I just got off on a tangent, but I like to do that. But... Uh, I can't say enough about sweet picking, uh, getting back to this topic, because you've got two string arps. You can... Just on two strings, you can create music. Like when you say... Oh, somebody said, can you please talk about the chord shapes you are using? That's a good question, and it pertains to this. You take basic chords. First position chords. Okay. See, so look at just like a C.
oh, can I play an Avenged Sevenfold solo? I will play an Avenged Sevenfold solo when they play one of mine. So here we go. <laughs> So when you have just a shape like this, it's a basic C chord. How do you move that up the fret? Now, you have a C like this too, because what you want to do is you want to add every tone, every note in the chord that you can in the position you are in. For example, what do I mean by that? So you've got... Watch if I bring that up. This is a great tune, this is too. And this is a really, uh, it's a great value for the guitar. It's a very inexpensive guitar. It's a great one. Wilkinson trim, high quality parts. And it, uh, I love the satin black finish. It actually costs more to do a finish like this than a regular one. And uh, the price point is outrageous. But getting back to this, see, you take basic positions. Guitar playing is not hard. You know, I've said this before, but it's paralysis through analysis. When you, you get paralyzed sometimes by overanalyzing, and this is not just in guitar and music, it's in your life. Um, you know, like, uh, say, you know, as uh, I've never been married, but, uh, you know, if, if somebody says something to me like a woman or, you know, that, uh, and I just don't understand where they're coming from. How can you? And, and uh, you know, I'm like, why are they doing this? How could they do this to me? How could they do this to me? It's easy. I can do it to you. Shut up. And so, anyway, but you can overthink things like, why? How? When? Oh, my God. How could they do this? It doesn't make sense. And then you overanalyze and you are paralyzed because there's no rationale for what's going on. Paralysis through analysis. But really what I'm talking about is overanalyzing things. And so what you like, what I like to do, so isn't uh, a vacuum player. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, sorry, I was reading a funny comment. Anyway, the idea is this. That with a sweep technique, your fretboard hand, and I say fretboard because, you know, I'm playing a right-handed guitar, but I'm left-handed, which, you know, playing the double guitar, play lefty. Your fretboard hand moves faster than your picking hand. Now, they have to sync up, so note to note is the same. But see, when you sweep, you're doing this. You're not alternate picking. Your hand is more relaxed when you're doing that, but yet you're going at a rapid tempo. And it's really e where people screw up is that the picking hand moves too fast or it doesn't move in sync. Maybe it's too fast sometimes and too slow other times. So even very clean, watch. So when you hear... Now, it can't get cleaner than playing with a clean sound, but do you hear all those tones? Then you can use what's called an extension. Now, all I'm doing is playing the basic A minor chord first position and moving it up the neck. See, because if you take an A minor here, I'm going to play with these three chords. Now, when I play this, this is why it's so hard. Just a basic A minor shape. Now, I can say this. Metal Method sells this program. The basic A minor shape that I just played, my video was the first one to ever show this kind of technique. I didn't say I invented it. I said I was the first one to show it and describe it because this is the cornerstone of being good on sweet picking. Um, when you can play this one, and I started it on the 12th fret because it's easier to do. And the thing about sweet picking, again, is your picking hand has to be really fluid. It has to, the reason why they call it sweep, you're literally sweeping your hand across strings and moving them back. So watch. Every single
single note rings out and sings out. And here's what I do. And again, I show this on the Speed Kills programs and all the metal method, uh, most of them programs. Uh, somebody wrote Barney Kessel's Sweet Pick on the Day. Yeah, they, uh, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, musical people find a way to make music and not, you know, also jazz players were really great at alternate picking. <laughs> rock players were more hammers and pulse. But rock players got more chicks! So I figured, let's go into rock. Because you can sit there all day. And then you go. So, but I love it. Uh, anyway, getting back to this, watch. I hammer from the 12th to the 15th fret but it's only one picking motion and then I glide my fingers I do a thing where or I refer to the banana the fourth and third strings you have to take your hand and you go do do and then so it's one gliding motion down all the way up to here and then back down and the, the idea is to do it perfectly you know pra practicing a lot is great but it's perfect practice that makes you a better guitarist and I don't mean perfection in the sense that everything always has to be 100% if you're in the 90% zone uh, and above watch my picking hand moves straight down up to there and then back up and so you have to know when to switch. That's called an extension. So what you are doing, you are extending the notes, extending the shape. And so all you, when you do it, uh, uh, just something simple like tapping. And so you can really get a lot of, you can cover a lot of territory with these arpeggios. So I hope this explains a little bit about the sweep technique. And again, I go really in depth with it on the Metal Method programs. But the idea is this, anybody can learn this. This is a technique. And this is the one thing that makes my lessons, I think, so good. And not to blow my own horn, so to speak, but I'm not here to tell you what to like. I'm not here to tell you what style of music to play. I'm not here to tell you what bands are cool, what bands are not cool, what artists are cool, what artists are not cool. I am purely teaching technique. The technique um, is what I'm concerned with. How you use that technique is up to you. It's not my job to, it's not my job to impose my musical taste on you. It's not my, it's my job to be an objective teacher and an objective uh, instruction person to say, look it, here is alternate picking. This is how you do it. This is the correct way. This is sweep technique. This is how you do it. This is the correct way. If you want to play whatever you want to play from Machine Gun Kelly to UFO, it's not up to me to decide that, but it's up to me to give you the best instruction that I can. And this is why I can play the way I do and I've been able to play like this my whole life. I just separate it. I separate the technique from the music. And again, musical people will find a way to make music. So if you work on these techniques and get a lot better at them, you're going to find a way to put it into your style and into songs. That's what people do. That's just a normal, you know, it's kind of like, think about sports. You practice free throws and you do 10 million free throws. And when you get in the game, you have to do a free throw. Well, now it counts. And so do you make it or, or you don't? That's the game. Well, songs are the game. And playing live, playing songs is the game. And so all the practicing that you do prepares you for the game. 
the game is music. And, and the game in sports, it's winning the game, scoring points. And so it's really, in some ways, a lot of similarities. You, you know, that's why you practice. That's why you have a preseason in sports. You work on your fundamentals, which is what they call it in sports. Your fundamentals, and then you apply those fundamentals to create plays, score points, win the game. Same thing in music. What I'm showing you are the fundamentals. I am not, there's no bias in anything. I don't say one is better than the other. One technique's better than the other. This is cooler than this. Has no meaning. Sweep technique, alternate picking. Uh, then you can have start hammers and pulls. And then, you know, you, you divide this and you get more in depth. It's how you use them that determines what kind of a player you are. And that's using it for the game. And the game is music. Now, also, I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, the MAB band. Uh, we formed it kind of around Sawtooth. Uh, the, one of the primary uh, two owners, Joe Fuco, is our drummer. And uh, we just released a three-piece version of No Boundaries. And it's so cool because people that know my career and saw me play solo, well, I use backing tricks. Now, granted, most of the time it was real drums, not every single track, but 90% but of them were real drummers. And, and uh, a few of the really older ones I programmed. But um, it's always, you know, people have seen me do this for a long time. There's tons of videos online. But I've kind of gone back to what I did when I first started playing guitar. Just play, just play with the band, with the bass player, with the drummer. And I, the two bands that I made it to major labels on were a three piece with the singer. So guitar, bass, drums, vocalist. That was in the band Holland on Atlantic Records through Warner Brothers and Nitro. Jim Gillette and myself were the band and we had a bass player and a drummer. And we were signed to Warner Brothers on Rhino Records too. And so both Warner Brothers labels we're a three-piece band plus a singer. Well, what we do now with the MAB band, our bass player, Nils, is a great singer. So we don't have a singer. And we get to do instructional, not instructional, but some of my songs that were written for instructional programs, like No Boundaries. But we do it as a three-piece, no click tracks, no effects in the background, nothing. It's just raw. And it's so powerful because Joe plays great on drums. He's heavy. He's mean. He's got really good technique, plays with his wrist. And listen to how good Nils' bass sounds. That's an art in itself because I've tried this before with other bands to use a three-piece. I tried this in Chicago about four years ago. I could not you know, this bass player I was using could do all this great tapping stuff, but he couldn't lay down a groove. Nils has this really thick bass sound, and he's very accurate at what he does, and it fills out the three-piece in a way that I've never been able to do before. You've got these great hard-hitting drums, you've got this thumping bass, and he sings like a bird. And I'm a good singer, too, so I can sing backgrounds. So we have really good two-part harmonies, kind of like the old Cream days. And uh, But it's kind of like I've always wanted to do this later in my career, and I finally found the guys to do it. So the MAB band rocks. You should go join our, we have a Facebook page, and and uh, we I posted our version of No Boundaries on YouTube, and it's also on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. It got such good res response because we just start with the rhythm. That the things that people have told me many times over the years, and No Boundaries is a perfect example, it sounds really simple. Okay, I just added a mixed meter in there, but you can't tell. That's the secret. You don't want to be able to tell. You, the idea is to have it flow. And I've heard this a million times because a lot of the times when I did my solo shows, I would get uh, opening acts and then they would ask me and there were some really good bands out there uh, that opened for me and I, I loved every one of them. And they said, Michael, would it be okay if we learn No Boundaries and you play No Boundaries with us? I was like, hell, hell yes, why not? Let's do it. And every band that ever did that said, you know, it sounded easy. But it's way more complicated than we thought, and that's the secret. I love progressive music. I love using mixed meters, but I like using them in a way that it's not really, 
I'm not purposely trying to write in 5-4, 7-4, 15-16. I hear the riff in my head, and then I use my theoretical background to say, well, what the heck did I just do? And so, but I play the music first like this. <laughs> I know that's not in 4-4, but I had to figure out what it is. Like do 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 It's three measures of four, one measure of three. Everything can be divided in duple or triple meter, meaning twos and threes. Two, heavy metal two, or three, two plus two is metal four, minus metal one. Everything in music is either twos or threes. It's either even or odd. That's the only, so if you know this, one odd, two even, three odd, four even, five odd. That's the only thing you need to know to be able to count. And so all you have to do is just count the riff till it ends. And then what I like to do, like I'll go like da 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 and sometimes I'll go So I'll double that, so in other words, you write four four but then you write the next measure in three eight. And so it's like one and two and three and four and one, two, three, 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 three. and so what it does is one, so the downbeat that should normally be there now becomes the upbeat and it throws everything off. And so that's, I love doing that. And I don't do it purposely, I do it subconsciously because I hear the music like that, but that's the way it works. Okay, now, so check out the MAB band. Uh, You've got to hear our version of No Boundaries. It's just so cool. I, I mean, just run in your face three piece. And you can hear it on Spotify, uh, Apple, iTunes, uh, um, Apple Music, no iTunes anymore. Uh, you can see, watch the video on YouTube. And uh, we're releasing a lot of new content too. Also, I want to talk a little bit about Man of War. Um, I uh, have worked with Joey. I've, I met Joey DeMaio uh in the 80s with, with Nitro. And by the way, I'm a big fan of Man of War, and they were a big fan of Nitro. And, you know, I'm super close to Jim Gillette, the lead singer of Nitro. We're, we're, we've been brothers forever. We're super close. I, I mean, he, he, I mean he, we never really fought. And if we did fight, I'd get killed because he's a black belt in MMA, mix, you know, mixed martial arts, uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu. But he's the coolest guy in the world. He's super smart super motivated, super dedicated, and he really sang everything that he sang on OFR, on the Nitro album, because we did it live. It was amazing, and he never lost his voice. I mean, I can't say enough about Jim. I, he was an inspiration for me. We just worked really hard. With Man of War, I recorded uh, several songs with them, and re we released one so far called Immortal, and you've got to hear it. It's, you know, again, it's on Spotify and all the, you know, Apple Music and all the places. It's a great track. And I remember hearing, I didn't even know what it was. I flew to New York. I started working with Joey. And all of a sudden, he just says, okay, I, I didn't know even what songs I was going to do. He puts it up on the computer, you know, his Pro Tools. And I hear this riff. And I brought, you know, just paper to chart it out and a pen. And I hear... Like, yes, yes. And then uh, we just hit it off musically. He's a fantastic bass player, fantastic producer, and he knows how to articulate the vision and make it come to fruition. Um, I just love the fact that he has a direction. And that's, you know, in Nitro, we always took that. You know, myself too. You know, I always had a direction for what I did. I, I didn't like like vacillate and be wishy-washy about, well, am I like a jazz rock fusion kind of reggae, kind of blues guitar player? No. Metal! Now, can I play other styles? Heck yes. Have I done it? Yes. But what do I consider myself? A metal guitar player. People said, well, you're a shredder. Yeah, but I got voted the number one shredder. And, and it's I didn't vote myself. What I did was I focused on what I want to do, what I like to do, and what I felt that uh, are my strengths. Like Steve Vai said, and he said it very eloquently and great. He said, don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you have. Focus on your strengths. Because so many times people focus on what they can't do, they forget what they can. And so, you know, these are life lessons. They apply to guitar, but they apply to everything. And, and so uh, somebody just wrote uh, 
my version of Herd is awesome. Thank you. Somebody else wrote, are there any collabs in the future? I'm doing another collab with Rob Scallon. If you saw the last one when he came to the studio and talked about my guitar collection, we put up the quad guitar and I played the sawtooth double. Uh, that, you know, has uh, over a million views now, well over a million. And, uh, you know, it's not that old. We're going to do another one. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing a, a major collab again with Rob Scallon. I love the guy. He's great. He's a great guitar player. He's a great guy. He's really talented in pretty much anything he does. Great skater. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of things. But, uh, you know, getting back to Manowar, I'm going to be going on tour with them. Uh, you know, we just fit, uh, you know, because, you know, in a lifelong pursuit of music, it is kind of like a battle. You know, and, and I kind of look at it like that. You know, you go through things. COVID was a battle to be successful. You know, I really thrived during COVID. And nobody said to me, Michael, you're so wonderful. You know, we're going to just give you all this stuff. It doesn't really work out like that in life. You kind of, you have to make it. It's just like, you know, I'm going to give you the keys to the Lamborghini. Well, I've heard it thousands of times. Dude, I'm still waiting for my keys, dude. And I get it. But I gave you the keys. It's up to you to drive the car. That's it. You got the keys. You've got to drive the car. You've got to make the effort to make that car start and pull it uh, out of park and let it rip. And that's the thing. Guitar technique is learned. You can learn this. I cannot teach you how to write an amazing song. I can't teach you to write like the Beatles. I can't teach you to sing and write music like Linkin Park or write a rock song like ACDC or Led Zeppelin or, or be a band like Avenged Sevenfold or Dream Theater. I can't do that. Um, or Manskin. I cannot make you connect to an audience. But what I can do is give you the techniques that will enable you to be the best you that you can be. And that's what it's all about. That's all I ever talk about. I never, never once have you heard me in all these live streams say, oh, dude, man, I, I, this band sucks, bro. But oh, this band's cool. You should be like this because this one sucks. That is not my job. Some teachers do that. It's up to them. But I'm not here to even criticize them. That's not in my world and my thinking. My job is to say, alternate picking, go like this. Sweep technique, go like this. And that's it. But if you get um, a chance to go see Manowar, I'm just going to tell you, you have never seen a show like this. Picture Kiss and the combination of virtuoso musicians. So you've got a show as big as Kiss with dream theater like guys on stage. Joey is a phenomenal bass player. Eric, the singer, has just a voice like an angel. And he's still, he's the original singer. He can still sing fantastic. We do these heavy, cool tunes, this massive stage, and just beautiful stage setup, and we're going to tear it up. Take no prisoners. Hail and kill. Yes! I love that. Okay, anyway, so to uh, kind of wrap things up here, sawtooth instruments rule. Why do they rule? because they can manufacture better, we can put on better parts, we know what we're doing. I have designed a lot of guitars in my life. They have designed and manufactured a lot of instruments. Sawtooth is not just known for guitars. They make great basses. They make great drum sets. They make cajones. They make all this fantastic percussion. They're not a one-trick pony company like a lot of companies are. They're not just specialists in electrics. Their acoustics are record quality. It, they are amazing. And the price point can't be beat. When you use the highest quality parts, you know how to manufacture better than other people, and you get the price lower than somebody else getting a better guitar. It's pretty hard to beat that. That's why we're doing so well. They are great, great guitars, great drum sets. Vinny Apice from Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio and his first job with John Lennon would not be using sawtooth drums unless he thought they were rad, and they are rad. So anyway, this is Michelangelo Badio. Remember, practice, practice, practice. Joey says goodbye, because I'm going to shred. Robert is angry. He wants.